A few of you may remember uh, when I made these some, I think some months ago now, they are half a pulley for a, a, a fairly rare Maserati. Um, two of them I have to make and I have been walking past this box on the bench and shuddering in absolute horror every time I did ever since because this is the pattern and the core boxes for the other half of the pulley. But that's one core box which makes this huge bit here. And then there's this core box and I have to mould this with a groove made by this lump of uh, steel in it. I make two of those, then I glue two of them together with this tube actually glued into the middle of the core and it has little uh, holes in it and it's a hollow tube and this acts as the vent because at this end, or this end of the core, I'm not sure which at the moment, um, the tube is all that's actually supporting the core to match that end of the pattern. So first of all, get the rubbish out of it, let's just find out how much sand we're going to need. And just some, some plain sand. One. Rough enough. Oh, get rid of those nasty looking black bits of junk, whatever they are. Okay. Now I need more rubbish in the sand. That's not good. Um, I need three times that plus. three times this but all in all that's 800 grams so okay to allow myself a bit up the sleeve I'll uh, make it three kilos all up there we go now the next the secret ingredient to make the cores break down we want half a percent uh, of glucose powder and we've got uh, We want 15 grams of this. A little more. No, a bit more than that. That's about 15 grams. Right. 225 grams of sodium silicate. I might just give that a little bit of a stir in first. Okay. Just a little bit crudely at the moment, but that's all right. That's seven and a half percent sodium silicate I'm using. That'll do. It's a pretty strong core, but then that's sort of what I need, I think. I'll take this away and give it a quick stir with the, uh, under the drill press. That stirring never, never mixes this stuff properly. So I find the best, the best way to mix it. Go in here and scrape everything off. Just whack it through a sieve. Incidentally, in the in the foundry industry, they tend to call these things riddles rather than call them sieves. However, by definition, apparently, so they tell me, a riddle is above three sixteenths of an inch holes. This has only got an eighth inch hole, so it's properly called a sieve, apparently. There's a bit of useless information for you. Having sieved, it breaks up all the, all the big coarse wet lumps and gives all the dry bits a chance to mix in. And that doesn't look too bad now. Put that in a container with a lid so it won't dry out or so the CO2 and the air won't get at it and set it off. I'll go get the gas cylinder ready. 
so we can actually make some cores. Let's try again. Right, that should be enough for that side. Now, if I can hold it so that it doesn't move. Just give it five seconds of gas down each of these little holes. All right, maybe that's it. Let's see whether it'll come out now. Yeah, it looks like it might. Not yet. Tap it this side. Here she comes. Yep, here she comes. And we're away. Yeah, I only need two and I got three, so I'm laughing on the baseboard to put this one on. Here we go. Oh boy. <laughs> That's those done. Hey, they're the easy ones. <laughs> now let's have a go at uh, this particular core. It's uh, interesting because I've got to tuck the sand in and around and under. That steel tube. I don't know how successful that's going to be, but I guess we're going to find out. All right. Now, here's a nice straight ruler that might do to strickle it off, more or less, anyway. See if we can just trim it up down to the level of the wood, down to the level of the wooden core box. Blow it off with a bit of compressed air. A bit of Move a bit of steel. Just tap it, slide it a bit to loosen it. That shouldn't be too bad. Maybe. <laughs> one end of this with a bit of blue tack that'll do. Now <clears throat> if 
and we gently start the degassing or we'll blow a hole in it. Sit it up so it just yeah. flick it. Take it away. Flick it over and gas it through the holes in the back here. <laughs> yeah. Five seconds down each of these. Now let's just make certain this is level. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Starting to come. Yep, she's coming. And lift. There we go. There's another one. That one's not looking too bad, actually. Oh, right. A little bit more of the release agent, I'm thinking. Put the give the steel tube a bit of a wipe down. Give that a bit more release agent too, I guess. Okay. Screw it back in place. Sand. That's number six. Well, that's the six I need, I guess, all sitting there on a nice flat tray for safekeeping. I'll, uh, I suppose I may as well use the sand up. I might get another two. Just a couple of spares wouldn't hurt. Now that we have the uh, CO2 cores made for the uh, Maserati thing, we have to clean them up a little bit. A few little lumps here where some of the sand went down the vents we need to delicately sort of file that off not too bad and then what i'm going to do is paint these cores with a, um, a zircon based wash it's a an alcohol wash so it'll dry quite quickly i will also oven dry them after i've painted this on i will rub it down when it's dry i'll rub it down with my fingers to smooth it up nicely the problem with i find with these uh, co2 cores is they're pretty rough now i need to possibly be a little bit more delicate with this than i am at the moment because i do have to rub this off afterwards and i don't want to have to rub for a month and, and i don't want to damage the cores doing it either for that matter Yeah, it's probably going to be a bit of work rubbing these down. <laughs> right around them, I guess. Like this. Smooth it up a little in there if I can. Get the rest by rubbing down later. That shouldn't be too bad. We'll find something to put them on. Yeah. One of those, delicately. Ah. Yes, yeah, so there'll be a bit of smoothing up to do there later. We'll be right, I hope. Okay. That's done that lot of cores. Now, put that aside for the moment. The next lot are going to be a bit trickier. Because here, Two of these cores have got to be glued either side of this 
brass tube that had vent holes drilled in it. Now, somehow or other, without breaking the core, we have to get it all glued together around this tube. Okay, that's one. I might just go get a little round file. It might be some assistance here. CO2 is not my favourite method of making cores. And for work like this, where it's quite thin, I think CO2 is really uh, pushing your luck to try and get it to work. Okay. Now. This core glue is known to cause problems in casting in that uh, it does contain water and you can get quite uh, severe problems of, of uh, gases coming from this stuff causing the uh, gas bubbles to come off the core and get trapped in the casting. And that's why I'll try and get around the problem uh, by uh, drying the cores properly. Now let's put the tube in there. A little bit of stuff on the tube again. Where are the vents? So I can see them. There they are. Okay, a bit there, a bit there. There's a vent there that's blocked. I'll just see if I can clean it. One of the little vents here. That'll do. One of the interesting things about this job is that this brass tube on its own actually forms part of the core the metal will run around. About this much of it here has metal around the brass tube. I don't know how it's all going to work, but I guess we will find out. It's a bit in the category of, well, you have to try these things. Now, I'll just prop those to hold them so they don't go sideways and fall apart. And I'll stick them in the oven and dry them. And I'll also put these in the oven to dry too. Looked like I could possibly do with a little bit more right there, <laughs> maybe. Okay. Stick these in the oven. <laughs> 